you know, some people even say some of the best love story, some of the best novels and books come between um, prison stories, you know? Prison life, I believe, is not a rehabilitation place. It's a place that brings mental torture and loneliness. As I walked down the tier, I looked in men's eyes and knowing there was one thought away from hanging it up, meaning putting a string on his neck and just taking his own life. In prison, sometimes on Sunday, we have what we call movie nights. You know, you got 200 to 300 guys watching an old film that's not in the movie theaters. They just get donated. But when the crowd and the inmates start clapping and the part of the movie, it wasn't because they was cheering at the movie. They was cheering because a guy behind me was being stabbed. You know, anything you do in prison revolves around death. So people are sitting there thinking that I just got to do my time and get out. It's not like that right there. It's not the time that do you. It's the inmates that's doing the time that do you. I was on my way. I know if we get at 6.30 in the morning, we're about to go have breakfast. I walked out. First thing I know, it was a man covered in blood, laying down in the snow like an angel. As I get into the chow hall, I seen a group of inmates around a gentleman. He had glasses on. Never forget this right here. At first, I thought they was joking around, you know, clowning around with the guy. And then I started to really focus and tune in. I noticed they had a bowl of oatmeal, and it was filled with, like, um, light bulb glass. And they was making the man take spoonful by spoonful of oatmeal. I seen his neck open up, just blood coming everywhere. After his head at the table, I knew that was a dead man. We was on a um, football team. They played flag football there. I catch the football. I'm running. Guy comes up. About 6'6", 270 pounds, put his forearm out, went straight for my juggler van, tried to take my head off. I don't know what for. Anyway, we got into a fight. I did 30 days in D-block. That's the hole. I did 30 days for that right there. Got back out, see the same guy. We shook hands. Hey, we just doing our time. I seen guys in their 50s, and they didn't have education that a 14-year-old would have. I seen some inmates behind the wall that couldn't even read their, um, their letters. And I had to read one to a gentleman, and I had to tell him his mother had died. So when you look at an inmate or look at a prison or institution, you got to look at it. They're part of society too. They might be locked up behind that wall, but you got grandfathers, fathers, brothers. In a women's situation, you got grandmothers, daughters, mothers, but it's all falls around the same thing, penitentiary, a prison. And when you're incarcerated, you're not the only one locked up. You have kids, your kids suffer, you have family, your family suffer. So don't think that you're sitting there and the world forgot about you. No, it's nothing like that. Your family still remember you, but the only thing, you're not in their life anymore. And that hurts. That really hurts right there. <laughs> appreciate life like me. I appreciate seeing a bird fly, a bird eating a cracker on the ground. Cause when I was behind the wall so much, I seen them but tree tops, I was beginning to think the trees grew in mid-air. Now I'd like to tell you guys about a part of me, a special part of me. I have a daughter named Caitlin. She's cerebral palsy, she's wheelchair bound. Um, she got like that because um, the doctor, instead of delivering her, he delayed her by 45 minutes, so my daughter came out with cerebral palsy. So I never knew anything about cerebral palsy until I had a daughter that has cerebral palsy, and I thank God for her. I thank God because a lot of daughters and kids that have cerebral palsy can't do the things my daughter can do. You know, she can sing, she can play video games, she even have an iPod, she play, um, I think it's called... Pepper Pig, Papa Pig, she plays that on YouTube. This is my Mood Swing CD, and this song is called Sit Back, it's instrumental. <laughs> I have lyrics on it. No, that's the instrumental part.
I started doing my time when I was 19. Let me tell you what time I finished doing it. I was 32 years old. I'm standing in front of you, 51. So as you can see, a great portion of my life was around just doing time. And I don't wish that on my worst enemy.